Hey everyone, this is Up North Collectors here doing a different type of video today. We're going to do a video on the basics of baseball card collecting, sports card collecting. I had a few uh, people on our channel ask about things like what's a true rookie card um, and, you know, parallel, short prints, that sort of thing. So hopefully we can help uh, collectors who are maybe new to the hobby. We know a lot of people have uh, come into the hobby recently, and that's wonderful. We're glad to see uh, the sports card hobby industry growing. Um, it was evident at things like the 2019 National that we went to this year in Chicago. See a lot of young people, a lot of people uh, who maybe collected in the 80s and 90s getting back into it now. Uh, and uh, so just want to make a video to help collectors uh, understand some of the basics. We by no means uh, are uh, complete experts on this. We've collected um, pretty heavily since 2013, so not that long compared to many collectors. I collected when I was uh, young in the 80s, uh, and so uh, my knowledge of 80s cards is, uh, you know, not that great, but um, decent in now, back in the 80s, there weren't all these different variations, parallels, and the like. Uh, you basically had uh, the base cards and a, a couple inserts, and that was pretty much it. Now there's autographs, there's different kinds of autographs, there's different kinds of uh, base cards and the like. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you some uh, examples of cards. I'm going to open up a few packs let you see what's in the packs and then try to explain what's in the packs. Try not to make this video too long, but long enough so you can kind of get an idea. Probably do a couple more of these videos, so please comment below um, if you have questions or what you would like to see on a future video like this. This is more like a tutorial video. Um, so let us know in the comments below. Also, please like uh, the video. Hit the thumbs up button if you like videos like this. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please do. So here we go. Let's get right into it. Um, here's an example of a uh, true rookie card and I apologize the focus may not be the greatest but I have these in top loaders so I have it on autofocus not the greatest focusing method uh, but hopefully this will work well so here's what we call a true rookie so this is Eloy Jimenez in uh, tops uh, series uh, uh, two so it says right back here top series two card number 670 so if you look at the back of the card you'll find the card number this is a way to check off on a checklist what card it is and how to identify that particular card. Um, and then up here, there's the rookie card logo, uh, which tells you it is a rookie card. Now, this was the first one in the top series product that they made. Now, he had other rookie cards and other sets, but most collectors would consider this his true rookie card because it was the first one out of a top series product. Now, there's probably a debate on this, uh, but this is kind of how we view it, and I think a lot of collectors do as well. Uh, so let's look at another example. Here's a Pete Alonzo. Pete Alonzo also had other cards uh, in other sets, but this was the top Series 2 uh, cards, the first one in a top series, so it's his true rookie card. There's a rookie card logo up there, and on the back you'll see the number up there. Uh, so Pete Alonzo, of course, hit... Uh, 53 home runs broke Aaron Judge's record uh, this year. Uh, and so this would be called the true rookie. Now here's a, a Tatis Jr. rookie. And this card is different in the fact that it is horizontal rather than vertical. Or we could say it's a landscape um, uh, version. So let's see if the camera wants to focus here. All right. There we go. Uh, so it's a horizontal or a landscape version. And there you have the numbering on the back. Um, and so that's what we call a landscape or a horizontal card. Now, in update this year, they may come out with a vertical um, version of the Tatis rookie card. And uh, even though this was the first one they made in a top series product, some collectors might want to collect this version of a Tatis if they come out with that. Now, Peter Alonso does not have a landscape version, but uh, this is the only one you can get right now in top series two, uh, the P, or excuse me, the uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. landscape. Now let's go into uh, something that is relevant in this topic of true rookie. So here's a Cody Bellinger from 2017 Tops update. Now notice the card here. 
has the true rookie uh, symbol, or the, excuse me, the rookie symbol. Um, no other print down here. Uh, and it's this batting stance here where he's swinging the bat. So most collectors consider this to be uh, his true rookie card. Um, so uh, the uh, difference between this and this card here out of the exact same set, same year, uh, 2017 update. And right there you can see it says rookie debut on the card down right above his name. So this is a different card in the set. Uh, also with the rookie symbol. So you can see where it gets very confusing. Rookie card, rookie card, um, but different cards. And I apologize for the dust on these top loaders. The camera picks that up well. Anyway, so this would be his rookie debut, and it's going to have a different number. So uh, US214 and US50. Okay, so they're different cards completely. This, the true rookie, this, the rookie debut, and it even tells you right there on the card. All right, next up, the same set, same year, Cody Bellinger has also an all-star game card. So you can see right there, there's the rookie symbol, but it's an all-star game card. Now, the card that's the most valuable of these three is going to be the Cody Bellinger, uh, standard or true rookie card. Uh, next, probably the rookie debut, and then the all-star game. And I believe Cody Bellinger also has a home run derby card in the same set. But you'll look on the back of the card, and you'll see they have different numbers, okay? So that's a way you can tell the difference between them. Now let's get into the Bowman set. Bowman has um, these first Bowmans, and those are the ones you are most collectors are looking for. They're looking for the very first Bowman card that's come out. So Bowman uh, comes out with their set each year. This is a different design. I believe this is 2015. Um, and this would be a uh, Bowman's first. Okay, so this is his very first card um, of this particular player. So now we have another example of this in Tim Tebow. Okay, so Tim Tebow, and this would be his very first Bowman card. Uh, they did not make a Bowman Chrome first of this before, so this would be considered his first. Now, once in a while, it gets confusing because they forget to put the first logo on there, but usually they do a good job. Now, here's an example of a Tatis in a Bowman uh, Chrome, uh, but this is his rookie card. So you can see the little rookie card symbol up there, and that shows you that it is a rookie card, not a Bowman's first. All right, so hopefully that helps you with the Bowman cards. The ones that people really go after, of course, are these Bowman's first for uh, the you know the basic design of the cards. Now, of course, there's parallels. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, and there are uh, autograph versions of these as well. So let's look at a example of a parallel. Here's one right here. This is a Andrew McCutcheon uh, out of Topps Heritage, and this is considered a chrome refractor. Now, in Heritage, they actually number these refractors, so you can see the numbering there on the back. And this is what's called a refractor, okay? So it is shiny, uh, has more shine than even the base chrome out of Heritage, uh, but in Heritage, they're numbered. Now, not all refractors are numbered, so that's where it gets confusing, but in Topps, uh, Chrome, uh, they uh, do not have numbers on them, but they usually will say refractors. And I don't think I have an example handy uh, here of that, unless I don't think this Cody, no, this Cody Bellinger. So this, or excuse me, this Pete Alonzo is just a base Chrome. So you can see there, it's not a refractor, even though it's shiny. But up there, they would say refractor underneath. Um, let me see if I have an example of that in my stash over here. Um, so I think I do right here and yes, this does say refractor. So here's a Xander Bogart's pink and it's going to say right here, refractor. All right. So that tells you it's a refractor. So most of the time tops does a good job showing you that it's a refractor. Now, another example of a different sort of parallel, this would be considered a uh, short print 
variation. It's a form of a parallel. In other words, there's another card uh, that is similar to this, but in top series two, they put a actual different player with this number. Now this is David Ortiz, and this is a photo variation. Uh, so they have other cards like this, where they have a Chipper Jones laying on the couch, reading some fan mail. Um, it's a short print variation. Here's a Miguel Cabrera, the same thing. Now what you're gonna notice though, is there's a different numbering code. And there we go. So this says two, uh, or zero two five 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 seven. So zero two five 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 seven. Now um, this is out of series one tops. Uh, so uh, they're gonna have different codes. So you'll know that it's a different um, variation just because the code is different than the base card. So for example, uh, this card will have a different number, but it's a, out of a different set, okay? So if you look at the base number, and you can look on uh, Cardboard Connections and other checklists, and it will tell you uh, things like uh, what the, the base serial number is so you can know. So a base card is just that. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute, but these are all examples of base cards. So these are just the regular cards you're going to pull out of a pack. Nothing special. They're the base cards. They're like cards numbered 1 through 300 or whatever the set is numbered to. Uh, here's another example of a parallel. This one is a Reese McGuire out of this year's um, Series 2, 2019 Series 2. And this one actually is numbered. Not all parallels are numbered. This one's numbered 84 of 99. And this is called a vintage stock parallel. Now, there's a whole bunch of parallels. I don't have examples of all of them. Here's an example of another parallel. This is a purple parallel out of Topps Heritage. Um, so this is also a rookie card, but it's a it's not numbered. So once again, not all parallels are numbered. Um, and so here is a purple uh, parallel. This is a chrome purple parallel out of um, Topps Heritage. So this is going to be a 2017 Topps Heritage. And then we have another example of a parallel. Here's an Andrew Benintendi Gold Parallel. This one is going to be numbered as well. Uh, to 2019, 808 of 2019. So that's a Gold Parallel. And then we have another uh, different card here. This is called a mini card. So the standard card is going to be obviously filling that whole top loader there, but the mini is going to be smaller in size. And so there's various sorts of minis. Obviously, this is a Derek Jeter mini. And once again, I apologize for this autofocus, but without the autofocus, I wouldn't be able to show you the details. I know it's not the greatest uh, focus uh, that we can have, uh, greatest video quality, but Hopefully, it helps show off the cards a little bit. So now we have a Raphael Devers, and up in the corner, it tells you this is a game-used memorabilia card. So this is a piece of a uh, jersey that he wore in a game. So this is considered a memorabilia or a relic card. Okay, so you see the back of the card. It tells you uh, this is what it is. You received this Major League Material card. Now, here's another example. Dustin Pedroia, a game used uh, memorabilia card. This would actually be a bat relic. Here's another example of a memorabilia card. This is considered a uh, commemorative, uh, uh, not a patch, not a coin, but a, a commemorative card. Uh, so it is considered a piece of memorabilia, not actually using anything, of course. They just manufacture these. It's a manufactured um metal piece that they put in this card, mostly found in blaster boxes. All right, so here is another example of a relic or memorabilia card. Two future Hall of Famers here, Mike Trout and Albert Pujols. Now this one is serial numbered. Right there you can see the serial number there. Number seven of 99. And this would be considered a dual relic. So two relics and two different colors. So a dual two colored relic. All right, next up, example of a autograph. Okay, so this is one of my favorite autographs we have in our collection. It probably has a $1 value, but how can you not like the name if the camera will focus, focus. Wes Schwackhammer, now, there we go. 
So, and it's an on-card autograph. There's no sticker there. So this is considered an on-card autograph. Um, there's no sticker. He signed right on the card. That's considered an on-card autograph. I'll show you a, a variation of that in a minute in a sticker autograph. Now, here's another on-card autograph. If the camera will focus. There we go. So Trevor Hoffman. Trevor Hoffman. This is uh, a mini framed relic out of Allen and Ginter. Uh, excuse me, mini framed autograph. Sorry. Mini framed autograph out of Allen and Ginter. Um, and this would be an on-card autograph. He signed right on the card. Now, here's an example of one uh, that is a sticker autograph, and it's actually a dual auto, but I think you can probably see on there a sticker. Okay, so the players actually signed a sticker. It's not on card. They actually sign a sticker. Tops puts the sticker on the card and then ships it out for you to open up. Um, next up, we have an example of a slab or a PSA slab. Okay, so this is going to be one that is a graded card. So it's graded. There's the graded uh, number. So it's a 10, a gem mint 10. And this is done by PSA. So you can see the holder up there says PSA. PSA is one of the top two grading companies. PSA and Beckett are the top two. And this is a Xander Bogart's a true rookie card. So this says it right there. There's the rookie card. Uh, and it tells you on this particular holder, it tells you the year, 2014, Xander Bogarts, if it will focus for me, uh, no sparkle, uh, gem mint 10, number 133. Now here's an example of a BGS or Beckett slab. They grade differently. They use 9.5, 8.5, so they go to a 0.5, uh, and then they'll grade the autograph. Of course, the Xander Bogarts was not autographed. This one was. So this Austin Beck has a 10 autograph, and the card itself is 9.5, and then they have these subgrades here. You can see centering, edges, corners, surface, all get little different grades, and then they combine that and give you the final grade of a 9.5. All right, so those are just some of the examples. Um, we'll try to go through more in other videos, uh, but just try to give you some basics of card uh, cards you can get. So I'm going to open up this one pack. We'll just quickly go through this and then end the video, but hopefully this is going to help uh, you with some basics of card collecting and understanding uh, how to tell some of the differences in the cards. So there right here is the base cards. Usually in a pack like this, you're going to have a bunch of base cards. So these are all considered base cards. Um, and the numbering is going to be on the back there, uh, 450. Uh, so all part of the Series 2 set. So here's a rookie card that has a rookie card symbol, um, another rookie card. So now we get into some of the landscape cards, which again are these horizontal cards. That's a nice one. Strike a pose. Um, and then more of the landscape cards. Now here is a parallel. So in the middle of the pack, you're going to have uh, the inserts and the parallels. Uh, Taylor Davis, and this is going to be numbered to 219. And then here's another parallel. This is called a rainbow foil parallel. That is not numbered. And Dakota Hudson, good pitcher, young pitcher for the Cardinals who are in the playoffs. And then here's a couple more inserts. We have this Evan Longoria uh, franchise feat. So this is an insert, uh, so not a parallel. And this is a, another insert, Johnny Bench. Now, what makes this a parallel is Dakota Hudson also has base cards. Um, and so this is a different uh, card in the set that it has the exact same picture, but has this rainbow foil finish to it. So if you pulled a Dakota Hudson that looked like this Ozuna with just no shiny uh, look to it. That would be considered the base. And then this would be considered a parallel. And then they make various other parallels like this gold parallel. They also make a uh, vintage stock and other things. So uh, back to uh, more of the base cards here. You can see once again, the rest of the pack just has a bunch of base cards in it. Now, I'll try to do a video where I show you the differences in different types of parallels. 
Um, and so I'll try to get a player together that has a bunch of uh, parallels in it so we can show you that. But for now, hopefully this is a good basic introduction uh, and helps you understand better uh, you know, what uh, to expect when you're opening cards and when you're looking at cards on eBay. Uh, hopefully this is helpful. Once again, did not cover all the bases, is not a perfect uh, example of you know, the basics of uh, sports cards, baseball cards, but at least uh, hopefully this gets you started and we'll hopefully get a conversation going. So let me know in the comments below what you think. What questions do you have? What could we help answer? What did we not cover well? Uh, what uh, uh, kind of, uh, you know, videos would you like to see like this? And uh, just let me know in the comments below. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching. If you're new to collecting, glad you're in uh, the hobby. Uh, love to have new collectors in. And thanks so much for watching our channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Take care. Have fun collecting. Please like, comment, subscribe. We will see you in the next video. Can't wait because Tops Update 2019 comes out this week. Looking forward to opening that. All right, we'll see you soon, guys. Take care.